sunny Homestead, Miami. Awesome weather. Uh, it's probably, I don't know, 80-ish, 80, 85. Fantastically sunny, uh, which was perfect because we're all pretty much outside. I mean, we have the garage, but everything's mostly outdoors. So awesome weather, great location. Uh, the NASCAR track at Homestead was a perfect venue for this. Having all 20 teams lined or 17 teams lined up in garages right next to each other made it really nice. You can walk up and down the aisle and meet every other team and see what they're doing. It was great. So we got down there on Monday night. There wasn't much for us to do Tuesday other than register. So Tuesday we spent kind of as a team bonding day. We went to the alligator farm, which was fun. Uh, we saw alligators, baby ones, big ones, snakes, turkey vultures, rode on an airboat. So it was a good it was a good time to kind of relax a little bit after working hard for months and then knowing that we had the trials coming up, which we're going to be working on again. So it was a good time to kind of get the team together. And then we went out for dinner that night, which was fun. And then the trial started Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Thanks to Hollywood, there's a lot of false assumptions about what robots are capable of. So when they see a robot walking through a door, they just think, oh, that's easy. Well, it's not. You can ask any of the 16 teams that were in Miami uh, how hard that was. Every one of those teams knows just how hard the challenge was. So um, I think there was a lot of camaraderie across teams because they all knew they were all working hard. And so it was really nice to uh, be in a group of people who understood what it took to get to where you were. So I think everyone there really had a uh, a good idea of how much effort was involved to make it happen. I think initially, I mean, right when they rolled out the trucks, uh, everyone got into their garages. I think everyone had been in competition mode, so to speak, for so long. There was that initial feel of a competition. But I would say after day one, that broke down. And I think it broke down largely because of all the problems. <laughs> so many things went wrong in the setup. You know, DARPA had communication issues and people had technical issues. And, you know, so all of a sudden you're relying on these other teams and you've got to borrow a drill or they've got to borrow some debris or task material or whatever, you know, fiber cable, who knows what. Everyone was borrowing from everybody. And it became clear to most teams, I think, that, um, it's not so much a competition as really trying to help everyone do as good as they can because you you know you know we're all in it together um everyone there is interested you know extremely interested in advancing humanoid robots and so i think um the competition field did melt away pretty quickly and it really became kind of a, a more camaraderie which was nice Uh, after the robot left, we had to pack up all of our stuff to bring down to Miami. And that's not just, you know, some computers, but we want to be able to practice down there, so we need our overhead rail system, so we got a secondary rail system to run down there. Uh, we want to be comfortable, so we got chairs, couches, water cooler. We want to be homey, so we brought a Christmas tree and stockings. We had some extra tools on the robot that we were using, so we had to be able to replace them. Uh, the other thing in prepping for the trials was s some of our tasks were back to back and they had to change the hands or the tools for the hands between those and we weren't sure how much time we'd have. So we had a pit crew or a team group that was practicing swapping out hand components in you know, five minutes. Yeah, so we had an RV provided by Pennington Law Firm. Um, awesome. Uh, we greatly appreciated that. Uh, it was a nice break from the heat. It was air conditioned, so, and it had a refrigerator so we could actually have cold drinks out on the field, which was nice. Um, and it was uh, set off away from the garages so you could get away from the craziness for a little while. We were there for basically four days straight. Um, so it was really nice to have that as a place to get away for a little bit because you didn't have time to get in your car. It was like a 20 minute walk to the parking lot to go drive to somewhere. So it was invaluable to, to us. Besides the competition, DARPA also had an expo going on at the trials. Uh, the expo allowed people to see other robotics activities besides what we were doing for this competition. IHMC participated in both the competition as well as the expo. We had uh, several demos, including our fast running robot, uh, demonstrated at the expo. 
Yeah, so our approach to Atlas was uh, different from other teams, I think, in that we really focused on walking. I think a lot of teams use Boston Dynamics provided code for walking algorithm. Um, walking is something that we do here at IHMC. Uh, Jerry Pratt and his team have worked on walking for over a decade, and so it's a, one of the things we specialize in. So we work really hard to get our walking algorithms working on the Atlas robot. Um, the other thing that I think separates us is our uh, user interface team, the human machine team aspect of Atlas. Um, we don't view Atlas as um, uh, a standalone entity. It's Atlas plus an operator that's going to get the job done. Um, you got to include the human as you design the system and because the human's going to be very involved as the system operates. More than an algorithm or, or an interface item, how you develop software in complex robotic projects, how you build reliable software that continues on, continues running. Um, how do you prevent introduction of a bug near the end of a competition? How do you ensure that your code runs after you make changes? You have to have good coding practices. You can't just kind of code willy-nilly and check things in because one, other people are working on the same code and if you're not clear and clean about how you program, then other people can't follow along what's going on. They can't interface with your code because they can't follow it. Uh, plus, you might break the code, and then it might take you a week to figure out what broke. So we learned pretty quickly that we need to be pretty, we need to be rigorous about how we, our coding practices, how we check in code around competition time, and make sure we test out things before we check it in, to make sure that things still work. You know, strong software engineering practices. And that was also a critical ingredient to the Dark Robotics trial success. Um, I'm sure more than one team there had a bug in their system that prevented them from doing as well as they could. Um, I can say that we did, we got pretty much exactly what we expected to get. I think we lost one point on a fall, but we actually knew that fall was coming and it was sort of our own mistake. Um, but other than that, we really didn't see any software bugs hindering us largely because of the way we do our software development. Atlassian is a software engineering company that partnered with us for the DARPA Robotics Challenge. They actually embedded one of their software engineers on our team for the competition. Uh, Tim came and worked with us for several months during the competition and helped us by integrating our software with Atlassian products and helping us use their uh, tools better. Boston Dynamics provided us an awesome robot with Atlas. Uh, we did heavy testing on the robot for four months and it was extremely reliable. We had no maintenance issues. When we showed up in Miami, we had some worn out actuators and a bad IMU, but Boston Dynamics maintenance people put in long hours until about four in the morning to fix our robot and make sure everything was ready for the competition. And by the time competition time came around, we were ready to go and we're pretty sure the rest of the Atlas teams were as well. There were eight tasks. There's a maximum of four points per task. So each task is broken up into a subtask. There are three subtasks, and if you achieved all three subtasks without requiring an intervention, then you received your bonus point, so the fourth point. So an intervention is mainly if you fall. Uh, if you have an intervention, three people can go and handle the robot during the intervention. So the eight tasks on day one, we had terrain, driving, and ladder of which we really only did terrain. We tried the ladder, but we'd never tried it before. Um, and then on day two, the other tasks were um, get through three doors, um, turn three valves, pick up 10 pieces of debris, um, attach a fire hose to a spigot, and cut through a wall using a drill. Extremely challenging task for a humanoid robot. I don't believe anyone's demonstrated all of those before. You probably have seen one, or maybe two of those things demonstrated in the past, but I don't think any one robot's done all of those things. So I think it's a pretty uh, amazing accomplishment for all the teams that performed at the DRC. Yeah, the terrain was the first task we did, and it was a really great way to start. Um, but the terrain was definitely one of the more challenging tasks. Um, so having that on day one, when most teams didn't, um, was daunting and also since it was really the only task we were going to try we did try the ladder but we never tried it before so really terrain was the only thing we we're doing on day one and so there was a lot of pressure riding on that one jerry and sylvain and, and those guys uh, really had uh, 
probably were feeling the pressure significantly. So when they did the train so well, um, you know, it was a really great feeling across our team. But when, like you said, when you look around the crowd, it wasn't just our team at the end. I mean, there were a bunch of other teams there rooting for us. Boston Dynamics was out there, DARPA people were out there, uh, and there were public people, you know, the people up in the stands uh, grew and grew and grew as we walked further down the terrain. So I think it was a real exciting moment for a lot of people. Uh, but day two went really well. Um, there were some unexpected issues as far as inset doors and wind and a few things that we didn't anticipate, but um, we also were fairly confident we could deal with them because we had built in uh, flexibility as to what the operator could do. And that came in handy in a lot of the tasks. Uh, the door task, I think, was the very first task we did on day two. And that's a great example of flexibility because the um, push door, which you're supposed to push open and it would just stay open, decides to close because it's a windy day. So you push it open, it closed. And I think several teams had the door close on them. We were able to deal with that push, change the way we did the task, and actually get the door to stay open so we can get through it. Uh, the next door was a pull door that's also supposed to stay open, but also got blown closed because of the wind. Again, you know, flexibility to overcome those kinds of changes. And then the third one was the weighted door. Um, since the first door had closed, we were running short on time, so basically John uh, had to go crazy on the interface to get us uh, through that door extremely fast. Uh, we made it with like 10 seconds to go or something crazy like that. So. so debris task I think was the second one we did on day two. Um, we quickly or reasonably quickly got five pieces out. We were about halfway through our time. Um, and we knew we wouldn't be able to get the next five. So rather than spend more time doing it and not finishing, we decided to um, shut down early. Uh, we could definitely do the debris task in its entirety, just not in the time limit. So the wall task went extremely well. Um, picked up the drill, turned it on. Um, uh, one of the concerns we had was that the drill they had um, didn't rotate, the, the chuck didn't rotate. Uh, we were always determining whether the drill was on because the little holder would rotate on our drill. It didn't happen on their drill, so we had to find a new way to determine that the drill was on. And we ended up basically being able to um, increase the resolution on our camera to see the bit spinning. Um, but we got it, we turned it on, uh, we were able to cut the wall out. John did a really impressive job punching it out. We could hear the crowd go wild when he punched the wall, so that was kind of fun. Um, and then John decided to do a little showboating and actually put the drill back on the table, which was really cool. I think we're the only team that did that. So the hose task was really hard. Uh, well, the first part's not so hard, picking up the hose and walking over to the spigot. Actually attaching it to the spigot is extremely hard. Um, it's a very small spigot uh, and you have to align it just right to get it on there. It turned out to be a very difficult task. Um, John got it over there pretty quickly. I think he got over there in like 10 minutes. He had about 20 minutes to attach it and he spent pretty much all 20 minutes trying to attach it. Uh, and then the other task was the valve task, which was really the easiest task in our opinion. Uh, we were able to do all three valves. We did end up falling between it. Um, the fall was basically because you, we had to crouch to reach the valve and we forgot to stand back up again. So really exciting day on day two. The DARPA trials were amazing. DARPA organized an extremely complicated event with 16 different robots performing eight different tasks. Um, they laid uh, who knows how much communication fiber to get all of these systems to work together. It was really a tremendous effort on their part. Uh, there were a few kinks that had to be worked out during the rehearsal day, but DARPA had planned for that. And by the time the competition came around, everything was ready to go and the event ran very smoothly. So good experience. Awesome experience. I think everyone on the team uh, is going to remember this for a long time. I know it's a highlight of uh, my career so far. I think all the uh, people who worked with us, even especially the ones going back to other places, can take that with them as something uh, memorable that they did while they were working at IHMC. DRC trials are done, scoreboard's up there, we're second place with 20 points, Shaft did amazingly well with 27, and third place currently says start and rescue with 18, but you know, they're, they may be adjusting points, so we'll see. But uh, from the scoreboard it says we took uh, second place and we're the top uh, Atlas team. Normally I'd say we're going to Disney, but we're going to write, we're going to drive right through Disney. 
get home hopefully in time for Christmas and uh, figure out uh, what we're going to get our significant others for Christmas and yeah. have half a day to get it. <laughs> and, uh, and then take it easy over the holidays. January is kind of freebie month. Everybody gets to um, you know, take it easy, take some time off, learn a new, uh, learn something new, try something you haven't before, or travel, pick up a hobby, volunteer somewhere, take it easy, and then February we do it again. Hey, uh, someone want to find flag down a forklift guy? It uh, opened the first door beautifully. Wind blew it shut. <laughs> opened it again beautifully. John made sure to have it all the way open. Took a little extra time. March through. Get to the second door. Beautiful. Just as planned. Next door. Beautiful. About 15 seconds left. Not only does he like make it through, but he makes sure to keep that door open as he marched through. Five seconds left. He's through the door. Four points. Beautiful. Woo! Very, very good look. Uh, yeah. That's good. It's good run.